the Baylor Bears steal a prize football recruit from the A&M Aggies. This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Baylor brought to you by Game Time. I'm your host, Cam Stewart of ESPN Central Texas and the Cam Show on Rogue Media Sports Network. Who says July is not a hot time for Baylor sports news? I certainly didn't. Trust me, I never said that because the Bears landed a Big time recruit on the football field this week. That's what this episode is going to focus on. Camorian Morgan from now South Oak Cliff High School has played at uh, Red Oak, also up in the Dallas area. Four-star defensive end. Huge, huge, huge pickup for the Bears. Don't just take my word for it. I brought in the experts like I usually do. That's Will Turboff, 247 Sports, who had some glowing things to say about not just Morgan, but what this could mean for the Baylor football program going forward years down the line. Man, I got to start paying Turboff. Got to start charging him rent, actually, for being on this show so much, but he is the best. So I talked with Will Turboff about this commitment and the state of the Bears recruiting class. Do that every couple of weeks now, um, but Camorian and Morgan absolutely changes that. But don't take my word for it. Have our experts tell you. Man, big time day, big time week for the Bears. Big time two weeks since we last talked with Will Turboff from Bears Illustrated 247 Sports. The guy. You know, Will, I was actually, I was at a Cape Cod League baseball game last weekend. And their slogan is where the stars of, of tomorrow shine tonight. And I had this thought going into yet another Will Turboff episode of you guys listen to me talk about the current Baylor Bears for some reason. And when these guys become studs, you will remember that Will Turboff was the first to tell you about it. Okay. <laughs> will Turboff is the Cape League of 247 Sports Baylor Bears football recruiting. So take that with you, put it in your hat. Today, as we're recording this today, a uh, big, big time commit, four star defensive end, Camorian Morgan picks Baylor over obviously a resurgent recruiting program in the last few years in, in SMU. Uh, he is a Metroplex kid and over the great Texas A&M. Will, tell me your initial reactions to hearing that that Morgan would pick Baylor because we you said on this last time you run, you say it's a long shot. That's not a long shot. Yeah, I mean, huge is an understatement. Um, this is one even in the last week where we thought that, you know, A&M would come in um, – kind of get him to reassess where he was because it felt like Baylor was the leader uh, for all of June, at least after his official visit a couple of weeks ago. Um, but the assumption was always there that, you know, they're Texas A&M. They can go out and, you know, offer him something that maybe Baylor couldn't. And the same thing goes with SMU. I mean, that's it. He wanted to be close to home, and that's about as close to home as you can get as a, as a blue chip guy. Um, yeah. But somehow, you know, some way, Baylor pulls it out. Um, they, you know, talked to him over the last few weeks about being a guy that can change the program and can change the stigma around Baylor uh, when it comes to recruiting, when it comes to, you know, just everything, especially in the Dallas area, uh, mm -hmm. even from a fan perspective. And it's one that I think, you know, if Aranda and this staff is able to get it done this year, in a couple of years, the Morgan commitment will be one that we look back on as, as really program changing. Wow. That's big time because look, the people who watch and listen all the time will are used to me overhyping prospects at this point. And I do do a little bit of that. I do. Um, and we will have a frank discussion about the recruiting class both today and really when it kind of all closes out. But this is one that you kind of said like this, this could change the tide a little bit. We're talking about a program that is not on a good trend right now in terms of on the field. Like we can't hide from that. And here is a kid, a star studded who's, who was playing at Red Oak now at, at South Oak cliff. I got it right this time on the first try. So we're talking big time six, a football up there in the Metroplex and chooses Baylor over to 
in-state rivals. Um, so big for the Big 12 as well. But I wanted to go off that point about a and M. I I mean, how many times have we seen that really since they opened the checkbooks the, the last couple of years when they were allowed to show how much they were opening the checkbooks, right? Um, of every blue chip kid from this state has at least a and on the table, and a lot of them were picking a and So just in that factor alone, we talked about the SMU thing and being in Dallas and how big a difference that could be. Is is this one that is a, a blow for the Aggies, even though they weren't kind of in it the whole nine yards? You know, I, I really think it is. And um, to be honest, most times when, when a guy chooses Baylor or even SMU over Texas, over a and over Oklahoma, um, it is because those teams have – you know, kind of cooled. Uh, that was interest, yeah. Right, right. And and you see it a lot on the boards and it, it ends up on Twitter and you think it's not real. But that's the truth sometimes that, you know, these big programs decide to go other ways regardless of what their ranking is. Um, but this is not the case in this one. a and was pushing hard. They missed out on Max Granville, who was, uh, you know, linked to Baylor and a and for a long time, ended up choosing Penn State kind of out of nowhere. Um, so they, they really wanted Morgan a part of this class. Uh, they didn't quite see him in the way that Baylor does, where you know it's it's a lot different. You know, Kamari, there's there's a lot of Kamari Morgans that come through A and M, and not to say that you know he's some kind of average prospect. This is a big deal, but there are a lot of big deals that come through College Station, yeah. and you know they wanted him. They still did. They saw him maybe as a guy that could develop in a second or third year there. Um, and I think the changing point you know, in his recruitment was that he realized that Baylor saw him as a guy that could come in and, you know, dominate and be one of the premier players from day. You know, he's going to get on campus in January and he's going to be expected to be a leader, um, you know, of this 2025 class for the next few months on campus. Um, and he's expected to be, you know, one of the biggest names on this team for the next three, four or five years. Yeah. But don't get it twisted. Tex Ag's message board will tell you they did not want him. They don't care. They got everyone they wanted. Um, but that that one's got to hurt. Today's episode of Locked On Baylor is brought to you by my friends over at Game Time, the only place I go to buy tickets. In fact, I'm looking to get back in the ballpark this summer. I'm also looking to get to see Liverpool in South Carolina and I sign up for both the Red Sox and Liverpool. I could sign up for flash deal alerts from game time. They got zone deals. They got flash deals going on. And I get alerted every time the prices drop for the tickets that I was looking at. I love game time, not only because of that, but because I get the all-in pricing when I'm in there. So the price I see is the price I'm going to pay. And the view from the seats are the actual view from the seats. So there's no messing around when it comes to game time. All of those things make it the only place that I go to buy tickets. If you want to go and, and get the extra fees tacked on and be like, oh, this isn't the seat from the view that I thought I was going to have from my seat. If you want to go through that rigmarole, fine. But if you want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets, you need to do it with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On College. I'll even spell it out for you: L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. And we made it through that whole first segment, Will, without really talking about Camorian Morgan, the player, just how great he is. Uh, how explosive, like, take me through his his game a little bit as, as a premier pass rusher. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at his film, you really realize how well, you know, playing basketball, he's a great basketball player as well, uh, how well that's really served him. I mean, this guy's got incredible footwork. Um, looking through his, his junior tape, it's it's the run defense um, that kind of stands out, you know, he's in the backfield before you can even look back. Um, and I think that's, you know, when we talk about defensive ends and, and pass rushers, guys that can play well in the run game, um, that's something that Baylor needs really bad. And, you know, they'll have to work even in this class, but once they get him there, um, you know, this is a guy that can really change what you're doing. And uh, Caleb Collins and Anoki Rectorfield will, will, you know, work from the start uh, to make him a big part of what they're doing. Uh, but he's great on the run. He's incredible on the pass. Um, he's very versatile. And I don't mm -hmm. think there's a, a, you know, I said the run plays kind of stand out on his tape, but I don't think there's really one point of his game 
um, that's better than everything else. I think he's extremely well-rounded um, and can kind of fit into whatever, you know, the Baylor defense decides to do in 2025. Yeah, and I notice on his tape, and look, I am a very amateur scout when it comes to this thing, but you you see in high school football a lot, there are some guys who you go to watch the game and they're they're in the backfield a lot and you're thinking, man, that kid has got to be a four or five star, and they're not because so many kids win either with speed or with power. Morgan is a four star because he does both and, like you mentioned, does it against the run. I mean, that's something – that really separates the, the the edge guys in in high school football. I mean, because so many of them are are just pass rushers, for lack of a better term, aren't really interested in stopping the run. Morgan, you look at that highlight tape, and he does everything the team asks him to do. And looking at that defensive end position in general, it's it's not something Baylor has had the last couple of years. And you follow the recruiting trail, obviously, very, very closely. Am I wrong in saying the the prize possessions of any class are quarterback, pass rusher? I would say so. I, you know, I think it's not easy, but it's not hard to go out and get three, four wide receivers every cycle that mm -hmm. you know are just as good as the guys that you already have. Um, to be honest, it's not hard, especially in the state of Texas, to go out and find a great quarterback. I mean, it is hard to find a guy like this, especially when you're Baylor, um, because there's so few of them. You know, there's he's ranked as, I believe, the number 12 edge in the country. And that gap from the top 15 on or so is, is pretty huge. Um, and there's only so many guys that can rush the pass that come out in a single cycle. Yeah. Um, and it's just incredible. You know, it's it's so great for Baylor to be able to get one of them. Uh, because, you know, as we've said, it, it starts this this movement of guys of positions, you know, at position for Baylor. Uh, when you get a Morgan and then he comes in, you know, a year and a half from now, plays well his freshman year, uh, you get a few other guys that realize not only am I going to be a big deal there, not only am I going to be well taken care of, um, but I can actually play well and I can be developed well. Um, and I think that's you know, Baylor hasn't had the opportunity to develop a lot of guys uh, that have the potential that Morgan does. And now this creates something where not only a pass rusher, but I think a few other positions, Jackson Blackwell on the defensive line, um, a couple positions where they're going to be able to develop guys that have super high ceilings. Um, and that's, you know, when you talk about this resurgence, um, that's what you need. You need to show that, you know, you can develop guys and, and not make them regret, you know, choosing you over the A&Ms and the Texases. Sure. I, I like that point you made about that kind of top 15 and then on down because I mean, defensive end is not the only position. There are a few positions on the field like this, but to me, it feels like once you're out of that top 15 or top 20, you're talking about projects and, and situational guys. Whereas you look at that, that, that cream of the crop of which Kamori and Morgan is in, we're, we're talking, you know, obviously development still to come, but, He's not coming in like a raw project. Um, he, he is someone who who is ready to step on a college football field. And I think that's what is going to be the most exciting thing uh, about, about Morgan committing to this class. Um, we, we've talked about it a few times, you know, losing Adam Schobel and that four-star and that quarterback tag that comes with it, uh, it. It drops you down in the recruiting rankings. And we, we've been talking about some good prospects that have signed with Baylor. That doesn't knock that class up a couple of notches like it would have with a four-star quarterback. You do that with a Camorian Morgan. But since we last spoke, Will, we were talking about going into a big week, that first week in July, and we kind of highlighted three guys. Baylor got two out of three. Not bad. Um, Jackson Blackwell, Ja'Cory Watson sign on. Caleb Burns says no. Before we take you into the guys who they did get, you followed Caleb Burns. You've been to a couple of his practices as well. That's someone you followed pretty closely. How big a loss is that for Baylor? It's a big loss. It's um, it's one. That, that, and to say that, that that looked like one that Baylor was hot on the trail for a long time. It's not like they just snuck in at the end. Baylor was in a great position yeah. late in the spring. And, you know, I think everything kind of changed when his official did it started up. He loved his trip to SMU. Uh, it, it seemed like he was well on track to commit to SMU on July 1st for weeks. Um, he loved his trip to Baylor. You know, it seemed like they had a great time. He wasn't quite ready to give them a decision then. 
um, and he wanted to wait to see Texas Tech. And then he went and saw Texas Tech, and you know everything it changed again. You know this recruitment had a lot of yeah. turns, um, but after that trip to Tech, I think especially uh, once they realized they weren't getting Smith Rogbo, who eventually committed to Texas, uh, they kind of zeroed in on Burns as you know one of the leaders of their class. Um, and I think, you know, based on what I've heard from people that were in on Burns and and close to him, uh, this was something where he wasn't quite ready to commit to a program that has a lot of questions answered. And, you know, Jamar Chaney is a first year coach. He loves Jamar Chaney. He loves the staff at Baylor. Um, but I don't think it was just in the cards now. Now, mm. October, November, let's say Baylor's already won eight, nine games. I think it's one they circle back on. I think it's one that they're going to continue uh, to go after, regardless of you know if he or not. Um, they want Caleb Burns. He's he's been the number one linebacker you know on this board for months now since Jamar Chaney's got there. Before then, when Christian Robinson was there, um, so I, they're going to be going hard for this one. It was a tough loss, um, but at some point you just got to you've got to take your losses and regroup. Yeah. And they do get Ja'Cory Watson throughout the week, who is another big-time prospect. Um, goes up to the beautiful campus of Boston College. Lovely this time of year. It's not 100 degrees. And he comes back and says, actually, I'd rather stay in Texas, if you don't mind. Uh, commits to the Bears. Uh, Four-star composite guy uh, on 247, Bears Illustrated, where you can find Will. Um, how much what, – what, what does he bring in terms of a skill set? Because, you know, you watch his highlight tape, and you're like, wait a minute bringing this guy in as a wide receiver. So what what does his skill set bring, and, and what have you heard from uh, high school and college coaches about uh, Ja'Cory Watson? Yeah, it's it's more speed. You know, like you said, you're not exactly sure what you're getting with Ja'Cory just because we haven't seen him play, I believe, a full season at wide receiver since his freshman year. Um, he's had an injury. He had to play quarterback because of a couple injuries, you know, elsewhere on the team. Um, but it's speed, speed, speed. And that's what they were going for. You know, that's been the message from Dallas Baker uh, since last season ended and, and for as long as they've been recruiting 2025 prospects. Um, and I think it's the star power. It's a guy, you know, that was thought to be one of Texas's, you know, highest ranked recruits a couple of years ago. And things didn't exactly pan out the way that everyone expected, didn't pan out the way he expected, of course. And, you know, now we're going to get to see his senior year wide receiver and i think we're really gonna have a better idea of what baylor is getting in him but for now there's there's still a lot of questions i think he's an incredible talent um, i think he's a great pairing with ashton jones those are two guys um, that i could really see you know being two of baylor's top receivers two, three years from now it is an exciting tape by the way it's you know again this is the very amateur football scout in me i could tell that those plays look really good so i i do like that about Corey watson's tape um and looking at the class in general um it's it's ebbed and flowed as as any recruiting class will do um again it felt like it took a, a real nosedive after the showable decommitment it's certainly back on the up now uh, but as we look at it there's and there are still guys that are left to decide but as we look at it here in in the second week in july if you if i had to ask you this let's let's put it this way if i had to ask you this in february that this is where Baylor was going to be in terms of their recruiting class in the second week in july would you take that as a win coming from a baylor fan standpoint you know i think i would i think in february there was a lot of excitement um you know, coming off of the the junior day where, you know, they felt like they were in a great position for some guys that have committed other places. Um, but over the last couple of months, you know, they've picked up, you know, Ja'Cory Watson is not a guy that anyone would have ever, ever expected Baylor to be in on. Um, there's a couple of guys in this class, Chase Collier, um, even, a, you know, a Bo Onu, who it seemed like, you know, Baylor kind of cooled on and then realized, you know, he could, he could play a lot of different things in this defense. Um, and picking up an Edward Griffin rebounding that way, I think, you know, I think the class is in a really great spot and I think that it will be, you know, maybe the best uh, under Dave Aranda if they get out to a hot start because they're preaching it to every recruit. You have to trust us. You have to trust us. And that only works so many times. And it's pretty incredible that it's worked this many times to have as good of a class to get a top 100 guy, you know, to get two other composite four star guys. Um, and Caden Nine and Corey Watson, 
and I think you know they're really liking where they are now, uh, but they're not satisfied. And that's you know when you get to like I said September October with with a Caleb Burns, um, and and you're doing well, and you can go back after him or Jalen Cooper just coming at SMU, or Mike Turner who still hasn't committed and and you know will be looking to be Baylor's second running back in the class. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a chance that this class and you know maybe somewhere in high in the 30s, maybe even the low 20s. Um, so, you know, as, you know, as an observer, I think they're doing a good job. As a fan, I would be wanting a little bit more. And I think sure. I think there's still a lot more to come. Yeah. And, I mean, hey, a mid-20s recruiting class is really good for Baylor. Uh, I've, I've talked about this so many times, and obviously it comes with great coaching. But even in the in the best of the Bryles days, they, they were not like a top – 20 top 15 recruiting team they just they've made the most of it so um you you talked about the Caleb Burns thing and circling back to it um we we're certainly going to hear that about Kamori and Morgan for sure especially if it's a bad start to the season for this iteration of the Bears so and you're talking to coaches what what do these next couple months look like for the recruiters obviously they're coaching a football season right now um and it's as bad as it's ever been in terms of trying to keep these guys. You know, I still wake up with cold sweats saying Austin Novosad's name from time to time. And like we hear it all the time now, we got to we gotta wait till National Signing Day to actually get these kids to put pen on paper. So what is, what is the approach for these coaches when it comes to keeping a guy in the class? Come out and watch us practice. You know, come out and see what we're doing. Um, we've told you so many times, look at all these improvements we've made. Um, but you know what they're trying to do is is show, and that is the only way you're going to be able to keep any of these guys um, is showing them how well you're doing, showing them these improvements, uh, and doing it on the field. Because, like I said, you can tell them a hundred times, you can you know send a thousand emails and and letters and all that, um, but it doesn't matter until it's Saturday afternoon and you're playing on the field. Yeah, that's a good point. That's all we care about anyway. It might not seem like it in the summer because we're looking for content and we're and we're so ingrained in this recruiting class, but that is what matters. And will we are not done with the summer. You mentioned a couple of names earlier. What what are, who are the guys that Baylor fans need to look out for here in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, Michael Turner from from Richels. Um, that's going to be the big one. Um, he's been, I would say, a top three uh, running back target for Baylor uh, since production is incredible. I mean, so that's an easy one for fans to follow along because his numbers are, are terrific. Yeah, and he'll put up even even better numbers. Not yeah. you know, not playing in an incredible district. Um, True. I don't want to take True. anything away from him, uh, but he is going to put up some insane numbers as a senior. Uh, we're not quite sure when that commitment's coming. It's it's been odd, uh, to be honest. We're not exactly sure, you know, which way he's leaning right now. It seems like Baylor's in a really good position, um, and if I had to pick someone right now, it would be Baylor. Whoa, okay. But I can't, you know, no crystal balls or anything right now. Uh, That'll be the one we just have to wait and see. I think it'll go into the season, and and he may be able to see, you know, as I said, what Baylor can do on the field. Um, Yeah. Yaden Sanders is another one from Kilgore. uh, Was previously evaluated at safety. Baylor likes a more cornerback, and and we at 24-7 Sports have have also reevaluated him at cornerback. Um, It seems like Oklahoma State – and Michigan State have a pretty good feel right here. I, I think Baylor's in that group. I think it'll come down to those three. Um, but that's another one we don't know when he's committing. Uh, we don't know, you know, kind of how long he's willing to drag this out. Um, I think it's one. Another one. Those are two guys where if you start the season, you know, 4-0, four, 5-0, four and, oh, five and oh, um, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. You get, you know, one or two of those. And to new kinds – taking some more time to think about it. Another four-star guy pushed his commitment date back. I asked you last time about Kamori and Morgan long shot. That wasn't as much of a long shot is to new kinds. Still a long shot. That's kind of a long shot. I think to new kinds is, is a long shot. It's long okay. shot. Right. Um, yeah. He, I, I think that he's ready to go ahead and commit. Uh, you know, our experts have, have long said that Notre Dame had the lead. Uh, USC was coming in. Uh, we weren't sure what Texas was going to do, but after DeCorey and Moore committed to Oregon, uh, I do believe that you know they'll push, and Hurricane Barrel may give them an extra week to push, and and it may give Baylor an extra week to push. Um, yeah. But when you're going against Notre Dame, USC, and Texas for a guy that you haven't been, 
you know, involved with for very long, it's, it's extremely hard and weirder things have happened in recruiting. And, and now we have another week to see if Baylor can, you know, pull off the impossible, but that's what it's looking like right now. Near, near impossible. Notre Dame, Texas, USC. What have they ever done in this sport? I don't, I don't <laughs> fear anything. Come on. Will Turboff, 247 Sports, Bears Illustrated, covering this entire wall-to-wall 2025 Baylor football recruiting class. And absolutely, you bet, covering this 2026 class as well. Will, thank you so much again for your time and for getting us all excited once again. Yeah, I mean, it's an exciting time. I'm glad to be on here and looking forward to coming back. Special thanks once again to Will Turboff. We will have him on again, okay? I did tell him that it kind of sounded like, you know, when you're on the phone with your significant other and you say, okay, I love you. And they just hang up um, because they didn't really hear you say the end of that. Sorry, Will. We will have you on again. Definitely. Because he breaks down this class so well and he doesn't pull any punches. You know, I, I, you know, he, he mentioned it a couple of times in there. He mentioned it last time. He's like, look, this doesn't mean this is the best class Baylor's ever had. Or, you know, he kept it Frank of like, yeah, Baylor probably shouldn't have lost that battle, but um, he is also the guy who has his boots on the ground more than anybody. And I am so excited about Kamori and Morgan, guys. This is not just like a hey, I like kind of like the profile, or I like what this kid said in his interview, or uh, you know, he tossed the hat. I think it's Corey Watts. So I think he's going to be a good player too. But Kamori and Morgan, this is a position that Baylor has really struggled with the last couple of years. Um, they have not had guys who could rush the passer. And even in 2021, I don't think they had an elite pass rush guy, not to take anything away from that team because they were awesome at getting to the quarterback. But this, I mean, you might have to go far back as like Sean Oakman, James Lynch too, in, in kind of a different uh, repertoire. But to get back to like real great pass rushers for this team. Um, and so I'm really excited about what Morgan brings. I mean, we're talking about three guys that are closers, three positions that are closers in football, quarterback, kicker, defensive end, pass rusher. Um, number one picks in the draft now are quarterback or defensive end. I'm not saying he's going to go number one in the draft. Just say it to say that's how much we value these positions in our great game of American football. And Kamori Morgan is one of the very best in the country and absolutely one of the very best in Texas. And I'm really hoping this does have the domino effect that Cherboff was talking about. Um, I also hope that we get to National Signing Day and he is signing his name on the dotted line for the Baylor Bears. But this could be a humongous, humongous uh, win for the years down the road if Kamori and Morgan is sticking with Baylor and becomes the player that I think we all think he is going to be. So special thank you to Will Turboff again. Special thank you thank you to you guys for making it your first listen today and every day. I super appreciate that, especially here in the summer. Let me know what you think about this signing. Drop that down in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, ring that notification bell. You'll get alerted whenever we drop a video here to YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. we got media days coming up. We'll be talking about that unless something crazy happens, in which case we might still be talking about it on the next episode of your favorite show, which is, of course, Locked on Baylor.